Darkman 2, The Return of Durant, short move for you. It's been five years in real time since the first movie, and I'm not sure they actually say how long it's been in the movie, so let's just go with that. And Durant is waking up from the coma. Huh that he was supposedly left in, in the first movie, and he wants to fix up his business and expand. And to those ends, he will need science fiction. I'm not gonna give away exactly what, what the plan is, but it does involve weaponry. And admittedly, the details of the plan are fairly decently, excuse me, fairly decently thought out. Meanwhile, Darkman has been... I don't know, he, I'm not sure he's really a full-fledged vigilante or hero, anti-hero, because he barely does any... There's like an early action scene of him sort of interfering in a crime, but that seems more incidental than anything else, so I don't know what he's been up to. However, his synthetic skin is given new hope by finding a Dr. David something, I'm terrible with names who is a scientist in the same field, and yeah, it seems like together the two of them could actually make the skin last more than 99 minutes. And that pretty well does it for the plot. This is a direct-to-video sequel to a theatrical released movie, which was directed by Sam Raimi and had cinematography by Bill Pope, and a musical score entirely composed by Danny Elfman. It's actually as good as you could possibly expect. If you lower your expectations and you just really want some more Darkman, this will get the job done. This is a perfectly serviceable sequel. Sort of the big problems with it is that it does not give neither Darkman nor Durand, who is again played by Larry Drake, who again does really well, although he's not as intimidating nor as Darkman because of just the, the script, the movie doesn't know what to do with him really. And that's that's essentially it for the the, the, the characters. Not much is the, the, the part, at parts there are the, the logic of these characters just seems... They seem to have gotten dumber in between movies. The effects are so-so. There's not that much action in this, but overall I suppose there isn't in the first one. This is smaller scale, though. The tension is quite good, however. There are several scenes which are very edge-of-your-seat material. And it actually is genuinely engaging. You actually find yourself getting into the story. The thematic this time is that of draw lost dreams, having having had dreams and then losing them because specifically because of another person. And that actually is one of the better things in the movie. It's, it's one of the few things where it does something that wasn't in the first. The big problem with it is it doesn't know how to, where to go from where the first one left off. Which is unfortunate because that was a great starting off point for a potential franchise. If you like this review and want a more detailed one, check below. It's there as a video response. If not, it'll be in the description box. I've reviewed other parts of this series. The links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.